Hi, it's Chris, and I'm almost done with the van. My last project is to make seat cushions and seat backs. We've got a king size bed, and the, it's built out of two uh, lagoon tables that can be put down in different configurations. So when the tables are down, the seat backs actually fill in that space in the middle. Some people may say it's too hard to sew your own cushion covers, but it's really not. My mom taught me how to sew when I was in Boy Scouts growing up, and I have a simple sewing machine. It, uh, in this example, I just used boxed corners and I did an envelope back, envelope style back to put the cushion in, and I just sewed in Velcro, I didn't do zippers. So you only need to know how to do a, a simple straight stitch. So let's get going and I'll show you how to do this. In this example, I've got one lagoon table down in the back and one lagoon table up in the front. So it makes a U-shaped bed. You can have either both tables up or both tables down. If they're both down, it's a king size bed. I found it was cheaper to just order a four inch mattress topper or memory foam. And I've cut it into uh, six different pieces, two long pieces for the benches and then four smaller pieces that act as the sides. I've covered the bottoms in a brown vinyl so I could be easier to clean and wash. And now I have these four pieces of foam that I'm going to cover in a nice fabric. So I decided to just buy a mattress topper on Amazon so it would get delivered free. And it's, uh, it's a short king so it's 72 inches by 75 and it was already glued up with the soft memory foam on top and the and the heavier foam on the bottom and I uh, just took the cover off. I'm just using a standard steak knife to cut the foam. I measured out the six large pieces and marked it with a sharpie and then I just cut them up with the knife. My daughter got me a roll of this nice fabric from Lori Weitzer Designs and I have um, four cushions that I'm going to cover with this. After some experimentation I came up with a formula to figure out the fabric size for any size cushion. The cushions I'm working on are four inches thick, it's memory foam and they're 10 and 3 quarters by 37 and 3 quarters. Rolled it out and I marked a blue line here that I'm going to cut. But the important thing is to get a really good pair of sharp cutting scissors, sewing scissors. Unfortunately I don't have a big work table so I'm using my living room floor. When I'm measuring the other dimension, I'm not going to count this edge here that's all un, sort of unraveled. I'm going to start from the good section of the material. I've marked out the other dimension and with a blue line, and I'm going to cut that next. I flipped the fabric over, and now I've marked a half inch line down the edge and what we're going to do is fold over a quarter inch and sew that. You don't have to but I really like this wonder tape. It's double sided tape and it's quarter inch thick so you can for these quarter inch seams you can just put it down here and then the material will stick over and it makes it easier for sewing. You could pin it but this is just simpler for me. I've laid the tape down. Now I just have to pull the backing off. I've got the backing off and now I'm going to fold this over. And I find I use an iron to help make a nice crease. I've got the fabric folded over a quarter of an inch and now I'm going to go put a single straight stitch down it. I'll pull my two threads to the back. put my 
my fabric in. Put the foot down. I'm gonna do a couple of forward stitches and then some reverse stitches so that it locks it down. When I get down to the bottom, I'm gonna do a reverse stitch also to end off the thread. And then with the needle up, undo the foot and you can pull the thread out and cut it. We're gonna repeat this for the other side. Now I've edged both of the long edges. Next, we're gonna work on making the envelope opening in the back of the cushion. So I have the fabric facing up and the cushion would be here. So one section is gonna fold up and the other section is gonna fold over it. Where this ends up is not all that important, but you want to make sure that it's both edges are both of these edges are not too close to the edge of the foam. In my example, I've done the bottom piece is 11 inches folded up, and I'll check that on the other end just to make sure that I've got it equally spaced. So we're good. Now on the piece that we folded up, where you can see the back side, the lighter color. We're going to draw a line along here that's six inches from the edge of the material. We're going to take the top edge of this material and fold it to this line that we've drawn that's six inches from the edge of the bottom material. Now we're going to draw a line a half an inch from the edge of the good material. This is the one that had the frayed edge so we we actually measured originally from the edge of the good material. So we're gonna make a line a half an inch from the edge of the good material here. Now you can either pin or tape these several pieces together and then we're gonna put a straight st stitch down it. Put it in a pin to help hold it so it doesn't pull apart when I'm sewing. And I'm going to sew down this blue line. Because this machine has a zigzag stitch, I'm going to go and put an extra part along the edge here to keep it from fraying. Now that we've got the single stitch and the zigzag stitch on this one side done, we have to repeat it for the other side. Just want to make sure that the fabric hasn't moved and that we still have the six inch overlap here. First piece of tape down and I'm just putting the second piece here. I'm just putting a pin in here just to make sure it doesn't slip when I'm moving the fabric to the sewing machine. I'm just gonna sew a straight edge, straight stitch down the spool line and then maybe a zigzag stitch along the edge to keep it from fraying. Next we have to work on boxing the corners. Now my foam is four inches thick so essentially if you draw 
two inch by two inch box right along the, the sewed seam. Uh, I just draw these, t these boxes in the corners so that when I do the next step, it's sort of a check to make sure that I've got it correct. You wanna put your hand inside and you're gonna turn the fabric until you get a 90 degree corner here. Now you see that you have a, a, a 90 degree corner. It's really a triangle. And you can see the line that goes across here from that square that we drew. And if we measure across this distance here, that should be four inches. You can see we have a triangle now with a part of that square that I originally marked. And I've drawn it all the way across and it's four inches. And that's what we want. And we're gonna draw, we're gonna sew a single uh, stitch across there. We have to repeat this process for the other three corners. Now comes the fun part where you reverse it and shove the pillow in. After I have the cover on as a test, I've got two, four inches of Velcro got sticky stuff and what I'm gonna do is center it on the back here underneath here and I'm, and I'm gonna sew that to the two sides I've stuck on the two pieces of velcro now I'll take out the cushion and sew it on optional Velcro that holds the envelope closed. So this is the back of the cushion. And then the front of the cushion. Well, I'm really happy how the cushions turned out. It was a lot easier than I thought it was once I figured out the formula. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please hit like and subscribe and have a great day.